Hello, this is Pastor Mike Jones with Life Together in Christ Devotion. And today we're going to be looking at Romans uh, chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. And as we prepare to look at uh, this scripture, let's ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds to the truth here and the promise that God gives us. Lord, we thank you for your word and for your amazing love for each one of us, Lord. And as we read the scripture today, may your love and your forgiveness be revealed to each one of us. Lord, we pray that you would fill our hearts with hope today and gratitude as we look at the scripture and think about your amazing love that you give us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So our scripture today is Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command as Adam did, who is a pattern of the one to come. So in the scripture up to this point, um, this scripture is talking about how Adam was the first one to sin. And because of his sin, death entered the world uh, two ways. First of all, uh, death entered the world by a physical death that we each experience and all the things around us die, nature and everything God's created. But secondly, death has entered the world uh, in a spiritual death, a separation from God. And so the sin that Adam committed of turning away from God has infected all of us that have ever been created since and that all of us are separated from God. But God then said he gave the law uh, the Ten Commandments and scriptures that tell us how to behave. And even though uh, before uh, the scriptures were given, nobody knew they were breaking the law, um, we were all subject to death, even though we didn't know we were breaking any commandments of the law, because that death and the effect of it is passed down from Adam to all of us. And then in verse 15, it says, but the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, Adam, how much more did God's grace or love and the gift that came by his grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses many trespasses and brought justification, meaning that um, even though the sin of Adam brought condemnation for all of humankind um, and the many trespasses um, of all of us, the gift of God, God's love, wiped away those trespasses and brought justification from the standpoint that when we trust in Christ, all our sins are wiped away as though we had not sinned, just as if we had not sinned. For if by trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace or his love and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act, Jesus going to the cross and dying for our sins. So also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as though the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so also the obedience of the one man who was Jesus Christ, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that trespass might increase, meaning that we were given the law so we would become aware of the many ways that we sin or trespass against God and one another. So it says the law was brought in so that trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. 
in verse 20, that's a very important verse. But where sin increased, the grace or love of God increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace or God's love might reign through righteousness to bring eternal or abundant life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so the amazing verse I pull out of this scripture is, but where sin increased, grace or God's love increased all the more to bring eternal or abundant life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so if I apply this to my own life, at various times in my life, uh, sin has abounded in my life. And where sin abounded, God's love was even greater and abounded even more. And so what this tells me is no matter what the sin is we commit, God's love is greater than that sin. His grace, his unmerited love for us is even greater. And so what this tells me, there's not a sin or a number of sins. It doesn't now matter how many we've committed or what that sin is. God's love is always greater. And because of his love, when we receive Jesus Christ, all of our sins are wiped away and forgiven. And so Christ loves me more than our sins could take away that love. He loves you no matter what your sins have been, how great they might seem to you or how numerous. God's love is even greater. And it's because of his love that our sins can be taken away. There's nothing we can do to take our sins away. There's nothing we can do to earn God's favor. But it's because of his amazing love for you and I that no matter what our sins have been, he is willing to forgive if we ask. And so today, whatever sin you're dealing with, whatever guilt you have, know that God's love is greater. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that your amazing love, your amazing grace is greater than our sins. And Lord, we pray that as your love works in our lives, that you would lead each one of us into the abundant life that can be found in Christ, an abundant life that we can experience today, a life of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and of self-control. Lord, give each of us that abundant life today. May your love flow through us to those around us so they would also come to know your love and your forgiveness and your abundant life. In your name we pray, amen. I love you and God loves you. He loves you more and greater than any sin you've committed. Amen.